Hello, and welcome to the Travel Guide of San Francisco, California. A jumbled college of colorful neighborhoods and beautiful views, San Francisco draws those free-spirited types who have an eye for edgy art, a taste for imaginative cuisine, and a zeal for adventure. It's really not surprising that songwriter Tony Bennett left his heart here. The city boasts jaw-dropping sights, world-class cuisine, cozy cafes, and plenty of booming nightlife venues. There's no shortage of ways to stay busy here. Spend an hour or two sunning yourself alongside sea lions on the bay, admiring the views of the city from Twin Peaks, or strolling along the marina. And, for the quintessential San Franciscan experience, enjoy a ride on a cable car or hop on a boat tour for a cruise beneath the Golden Gate Bridge. Often described as Los Angeles' more refined northern cousin, cool and compact San Francisco takes the big city buzz exuded by its southern counterpart and melds it with a sense of small-town charm. Here, you'll discover a patchwork of culture flourishing throughout San Francisco's many vibrant quarters. Follow the crowds to the touristy Fisherman's Wharf area, which offers spectacular views of Alcatraz, before heading along the bay to the Presidio for a glimpse of the famous Golden Gate Bridge. Alcatraz was the site of the first lighthouse in the western United States but became a federal penitentiary from 1934 to 1963, housing famous convicts such as Al Capone and George Machine Ven Kelly. Now this once infamous prison island is part of the Bay Area's 80,000-acre Golden Gate National Recreation Area. Located one and a half miles from Fisherman's Wharf, Alcatraz is one of the city's most popular attractions. A visit to the island includes a tour of the cell house where visitors can see where the prisoners lived. Although the last inmates were transferred off the island in 1963, the main prison block, with its steel bars, claustrophobic cells, mess hall, library, and dark holes, is still structurally intact. Alcatraz Cruises is the official ferry provider to Alcatraz. Departures start at 8.40 a.m. and are available every half an hour throughout the day. Please note that these cruises frequently sell out, so plan and book your cruise in advance, especially in the summer and on holidays. The Golden Gate Bridge is San Francisco's top-rated tourist spot and for good reason. It guards the bay and muscles its way into the forefront of the city's skyline. The bridge is 1.3 miles from one end to the other. Pedestrians can walk on the eastern sidewalk of the bridge. You can simply park near the bridge and stroll over it, but there are also some cool trails that lead up to the bridge which are worth doing. It's worth visiting the bridge at dawn if you want nice light for your photo shoot. The best spot for that is below the bridge at Chrissy Field and Fort Point. For sunsets, the best spot is west of the bridge along the Batteries to Bluffs Trail or on the north side in the Marin Headlands. It's free to visit the Golden Gate Bridge. It's also free to walk the nearby trails, the historic Fort Point site and the gun batteries. However, some of the nearby parking lots cost from $1 to $1.90 per hour. The Welcome Center has two parking lots very close to the south end of the bridge. But altogether, there are eight parking lots within walking distance of the south end and another three on the north end. Some of these are free and others are paid. The bridge spans both sides of the bay and the area encompasses a lot of natural beauty and historical interest. So there are many different ways to view the bridge and all of them are Instagrammable. The cable car runs on a track that is connected to a cable line. The cable lines are constantly moving. When the conductor needs to stop, he or she simply releases the car's grip on the cable. To move, the grip is initiated again. Thus all the movement of the cars comes from the tracks and below. There are three routes you can choose from. Powell Hyde Line, Blue Line, Powell Mason Line, Green Line, California Line, Red Line. Though each route provides breathtaking views, your experience will vary depending on the direction the car is going, your location in the car, your driver, and traffic. All three lines intersect at the California Street and Powell Street intersection. Most San Franciscans will tell you that the Powell Hyde Line is the most exciting trip to take and we wholeheartedly agree. The Powell Hyde Line starts at the cable car turnaround at Powell Street and Market Street. On this route, you'll have views of Coit Tower, Alcatraz Island, the Financial District, and San Francisco Bay. Instead of waiting in long lines at the ticket booths, Walk up a few blocks and catch your cable car there and purchase your ticket from the conductor. You may have heard that you can hop off and on cable cars as many times as you like once you purchase a ticket. This isn't exactly true, 
though there is a way to use cable cars as a hop-on slash hop-off tour experience. Single ride tickets are $7 per person. Whether you're traveling with the kids, looking for a fun and romantic date setting, or just seeking a getaway with friends, the possibilities are endless at Pier 39, one of San Francisco's most beloved destinations. Built in the 1970s, Pier 39 was one of the first and most successful attempts to turn San Francisco's waterfront into a vibrant, bustling attraction for visitors and locals alike. Home to San Francisco originals, live performances, excellent dining, incredible views, and close proximity to a number of other attractions, it's no wonder that Pier 39 is second only to Alcatraz among our city's most visited destinations. San Francisco is home to many wild animals, the parrots of Telegraph Hill, the mysterious buffalo in Golden Gate Park, and a crowd of boisterous sea lions who camp out on Pier 39's K Dock. These wild marine mammals have resided at Pier 39 since 1990, arriving in droves shortly after the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake. Just as North Beach is known for its pasta, Pier 39 is famous for its seafood. Home to 14 full service restaurants, Pier 39 is known for serving some of the freshest and most delicious dishes. At Fog Harbor Fish House, all seafood on the menu is guaranteed fresh and sustainably farmed, and every meal comes with a complimentary view of the Golden Gate Bridge. Pier Market is well known for its mesquite grilled seafood and fresh sordo bread, served complimentary to every table. Dine on the heated outdoor patio or in the dining room with views of the San Francisco Bay. Pier 39 has more than 60 specialty shops with everything from saltwater taffy to left-handed merchandise, custom blended spices to handcrafted jewelry. It's difficult to leave without that perfect gift for the folks back home. The hills of San Francisco have led to some fairly interesting architectural challenges. While most developers chose to create simple roads, others decided to take another route. In the case of Lombard Street, its creator was met with the challenge of creating a road that wouldn't be too steep for most drivers. The result has become known colloquially as the most crooked street in the city. Thanks to its interesting structural approach to the problem of traveling downhill, this location has become one of the most popular tourist destinations in the city. Whether you want to attempt to drive down the hairpin turns of Lombard Street or you'd rather just take a picture of this location, there are plenty of ways to see this historic site. As a fully functional public road, it's free to visit. The only cost associated with this landmark comes from traveling to and from the area. You can also reach this location via car. If you have access to a vehicle, you may even be able to drive down San Francisco's most crooked street. That being said, traffic on this street can often be very heavy, resulting in long waits. Although driving there is definitely a good option, it can also be somewhat frustrating. Millions of visitors each year experience Golden Gate Park's miles of green lawns, bridal paths, lakes, and 7,000 kinds of plants right in the heart of San Francisco. Enjoy varied attractions from top museums to exquisite gardens and extraordinary events. Much as San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge was deemed the bridge that couldn't be built, the 1,000-plus acres of terrain once known as the Outside Lands wasn't a promising site for a park. In 1871, field engineer William Hammond Hill and master gardener John McLaren carved out an urban oasis later named Golden Gate Park. Today, the park is home to some of San Francisco's most visited attractions, including the Japanese Tea Garden, the San Francisco Botanical Garden, the de Young Museum, and the California Academy of Sciences. Golden Gate Park sees more than 24 million visitors annually, making it the third most visited city park in the United States. A four-story living rainforest and awe-inspiring coral reef ecosystem will delight visitors of all ages, while immersive planetarium shows will transport audiences through space and time for a new perspective on our planet. Entrance fee for adults is $9, $6 for youth, seniors and college students, $3 for children from 5 to 11 years and children below 5 are free. Oracle Park is a baseball-only stadium. It has three levels of seats in most of the park, lower level, club level, and view level. It has bleachers just past left field and a large brick wall just past right field. Since Oracle Park opened as Pac Bell Park, there has been a giant Coke bottle behind the left field bleachers. 
Coke sponsored it and you will find Coke products, not Pepsi products at Oracle Park. The Coke bottle has slides for kids. If the Giants hit a home run then the four brick columns on top of the right field wall will shoot water cannons up into the air. San Francisco Bay Ferry runs boats from right behind the ballpark to their terminals in Vallejo, Alameda, and Oakland. The Palace of Fine Arts is a free attraction that features a beautiful dome and curved columns. It's set in a colorful park on the northern side of San Francisco in the Marina District. It's one of the favorite places to sit back, relax, and enjoy the beauty of the city. It is one of just a handful of remaining structures from the 1915 Panama Pacific Exposition. It's the largest remaining structure and draws in hundreds of visitors a day. It was built as a temporary structure for the expo and was supposed to be torn down. However, both visitors and locals fell in love with it, so the city of San Francisco decided to keep it standing. Bird lovers, you will definitely want to visit the Palace of Fine Arts to see the variety that inhabit the lagoon. There are many types of birds, including herons, seagulls, owls, and of course ducks and mallards. Some individual birds are even famous. The park is open both day and night. It's free to visit and it usually takes about 30 minutes, you will find it at 3301 Leon Street. Located in the heart of San Francisco's Golden Gate Park, the California Academy of Sciences offers life-changing experiences with world-changing science. The museum contains an aquarium, planetarium, rainforest, and natural history museum, making it a one-stop shop for exploring your world when you come to San Francisco. The Steinhardt Aquarium houses nearly 40,000 live animals, representing more than 900 unique species, making it one of the most biologically diverse and interactive aquariums on Earth. Observe a Philippine coral reef, a colony of endangered African penguins, flashlight fish, coconut octopuses, and more. In addition to providing an unprecedented view of many marine habitats, visitors can also learn about our local ecosystems and sustainability solutions through various enrichment programs. Located at 55 Music Concourse Drive San Francisco, K94118. It is open Monday to Sat, 9.30 a.m. till 5 p.m. and Sunday, 11 a.m. till 5 p.m. Thursday Nightlife, 6 till 10 p.m. Muni serves the Academy via a number of convenient bus and metro lines. Take public transit and save $3 on daytime admission. The Morrison Planetarium is your passport to the universe. Inside this 75-foot dome that mimics the tilt of planet Earth, discover all of the latest findings, theories of the universe and beautiful visualizations of the galaxies beyond our world. Planetarium show passes are included in the price of admission. See the Academy's daily calendar for exact shows and showtimes. Coit Tower is 210 feet tall and has stood above the city since its inauguration in 1934. The Art Deco style tower is surrounded by a nearly five-acre park, Pioneer Park, and offers a 360-degree view of the entire city, the bay, the Golden Gate, and Alcatraz. The Coit Tower is located at 1 Telegraph Hill Boulevard in the northern part of San Francisco, between North Beach and the Embarcadero. It is only a 20-minute walk from Pier 39 and Fisherman's Wharf. Because it is located on a hill, it means that the tower is clearly visible in the San Francisco skyline, which is why it is now one of the city's top attractions and one of the most visited places in the city. The tower is named after Lily Hitchcock Coit, an eclectic lady who lived between 1843 and 1929. Famous for her disguising as a man, gambling, and for her passion and respect for firefighters, she left $125,000 in donations to beautify the city she loved so much. Lily Hitchcock Coit is now the patroness of the San Francisco Fire Department, and there are two monuments dedicated to her. One is a statue in which three firemen save a woman, and the other is Coit Tower on Telegraph Hill. Coit Tower is easily accessible by bus. You can take the Muni's 39 Coit bus from Fisherman's Wharf or Washington Square Park. You probably already know that San Francisco's Chinatown is the largest Chinese community outside of Asia. Well, during a visit to the city by the bay, these 24 city blocks make up one of the main destinations in the city. You can spend half a day eating dim sum, shopping for souvenirs, and perhaps you may forget for a moment that you are in America. It was founded in 1848, the year that the emigration from Guangdong and Hong Kong began and continued until the 1900s. 
Chinatown in San Francisco is the most densely populated area west of Manhattan. Baker Beach in San Francisco sits along the water where the Pacific Ocean meets the San Francisco Bay. It's in the historical Presidio on the northern end of the city and is about a mile long. This San Francisco beach is popular with locals. Locals and tourists love spending time here enjoying the beautiful surroundings. From its sands, you can see the Marin Headlands across the water and the western side of the Golden Gate Bridge. If you are looking for an amazing place to photograph the bridge, this is one of your best bets. As you can see from the views of the beach, you can find several spots with dramatic views of this golden gem. It also makes for the perfect setting since it is surrounded by cliffs which add to the beauty. In our opinion, it's one of the most stunning locations in San Francisco. Ghirardelli Square in San Francisco is a very popular attraction located at Fisherman's Wharf, the go spot for chocolate lovers and the best place for ice cream sundaes at the waterfront. Is it touristy? Definitely, but the location is authentic and their chocolates are great. Plus, they serve tasty and very large ice cream sundaes to go with their chocolate sauces. It's a pretty location as well. The Ghirardelli Chocolate Company was incorporated in San Francisco in 1852 and is the oldest continuously operating chocolate producer in the U.S. San Francisco City Hall is undoubtedly one of the most famous and recognizable buildings in the city. Its 307 feet high dome is one of the largest domes in the world and, with a difference of about 19 feet, surpasses in height even that of the Capitol in Washington. San Francisco City Hall is also known as People's Palace. The large building you see today dates back to 1915 and is the second city hall. In fact, the first one was destroyed in the Great Earthquake of 1906. In 1913, work began to rebuild City Hall following the designs of Arthur Brown Jr the same architect who designed the Coit Tower, the federal offices at 50 United Nations Plaza, and the San Francisco War Memorial Opera House. San Francisco City Hall is located at One Drive Carlton B. Goodlett Pace in San Francisco's Civic Center neighborhood. The main entrance is right on Drive Carlton B. Goodlett Place between McAllister Street and Grove Street. To enter the facility, you will have to go through security and metal detectors. Remember that should you have large bags or suitcases with you, you will have to enter through the entrance on Grove Street. The nearest stop from UNI and BRT is the Civic Center Station. The station is served by the blue, green, yellow, and red subway lines. San Francisco City Hall is open Monday through Saturday from 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. On holidays, City Hall is generally closed. The San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge is the region's workhorse bridge carrying more than a third of the traffic of all of the state-owned bridges combined. It is also a jewel along the San Francisco waterfront. The San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge is made up of two bridge segments, a skyway structure slash single anchored suspension bridge between Oakland and near Babuena Island, and a suspension span from the island to San Francisco. Connecting the two is the largest diameter bore tunnel in the world. The design of the new East Span, which opened in September 2013, features a single-tower, self-anchored suspension bridge for the segment of the bridge that crosses the shipping channel and a skyway structure over the shallower waters close to the Oakland shore. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share our videos.